Hello and welcome to the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Minute. Wherever you are, whatever time of the day, thank you for joining us. I'll just wait a little while for people to join in. For those are who, of you who are new to the Healing Minute, my name is Bev. Make yourself comfortable and relax. Focus on your breath, in with the new and out with the old. Clear your mind of any worries and allow your body to release and let go. Feel calm and know that you are safe and at ease. Allow your feet to anchor with Mother Earth in your mind's eye, like the roots of a tree, reaching a pink pool of love and light. Now visualise yourself inside the sanctuary chapel or in the rose garden with the water fountain, or perhaps in the surrounding woodland of Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, or wherever your favourite place is. Let's begin with the attunement and grounding. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies and wherever you are right now. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine, uh, imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love balanced by the nurturing protection love of Mother Earth. Now the Sanctuary Prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me may be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me closer into a closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair who do not know the help that can reach them from spirit. I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. Now for the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love, Within the heart of God, love has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. Touched by angels. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us 
walk beside us through the days ahead and the hours of darkness when our dreams have flown they bring hope and gentle healing we are not alone in our times of doubting still they understand and forever touched by angels we walk hand in hand we now ask that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder and perhaps in your own thoughts and written words receive healing for their highest good we also request healing for their family friends and healing for whom they have requested distant healing also send healing for the animals of this world and especially to our animal friends who are part of our family and some now in spirit now for a minute of silence whilst these healing energies are sent out to the world May all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessings for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies. And to all our friends in spirit, thank you. Today I'm reading part of an introduction um, of a first chapter and a little bit of the second of a, a book written by Jack Angelo. The book is titled The Healing Wisdom of Mary Magdalene, Esoteric Secrets of the Fourth Gospel. In the introduction he writes, the people of the world are realising at last that great spiritual masters come here for all of us. No religion, race or culture owns them. For important souls reasons each one of them chooses to be born in a certain place and at a certain time. Thus, their lives and teachings reflect the times and places in which they lived as physical beings. But this should not blind us to the reality that our teachings belong to all of us, not to a specific, specific religious group, race or culture. True spiritual masters may be recognised as those whose teachings resonate with all times and all places. Mary Magdalene is one such spiritual master. However, it is essential not to focus on the historical person who lived in the Middle East two millennia ago. You will not get any closer to your sacred self by agonising about who she was, whether she was married or bore children, and where she ended up. For she transcends personhood. This being is better thought of as a powerful, loving, spiritual force that can be called upon in our time to help us solve the problems caused by our sense of separation from each other and our disconnection from the sacred. It is a joyful fact that the mysteries hidden for nearly 2,000 years still have the power to speak to all human beings and address the state of the world today. The voice is loud and clear. The healing wisdom of Mary Magdalene unlocks the hidden mysteries of Mary Magdalene's teaching story to gift us all. 
irrespective of religion, spiritual outlook, ethnicity, gender or sexuality, with the guidance and healing wisdom to achieve the consciousness that arises in heart alone. Mary Magdalene has been aware of this book from the time I first began to dream about it many years ago. In the final chapter, she updates the teachings revealed by each sign, giving further power to their contemporary relevance. This is what I'm going to share with you, he writes. The first chapter is Discovering Mary Magdalene, the Teacher, a Childhood Vision. It's Bristol, 1941. Bombs are falling on the countryside where we live. Luftwaffe planes are attacking the city, raining down incendiary devices and high explosives. They are aiming for the docks, the railways and the aircraft factories. We have lost our house and everything in it. The world is at war. I later learn that the Good Friday raids killed a thousand people and injured thousands more. The wail of a siren still makes me takes me back to being carried in my mother's arms to the garden shelter. I can feel my mother's panic, smell her sweat, hear her panting for breath. My nostrils are clogged with dust and the smell of destruction. I look up into the dark indigo sky and see the searchlights like giant fingers of light pointing out the dark shapes of the bombers with their deadly cargo and stars in the hundreds. I hear the dreadful hum of engines overhead and the boom boom of the aircraft guns below. The air crackles with the sound of explosions and breaking glass. With distant shouts and screams, screams there is panic and despair. Why isn't my dad here to help us? In such a night, I have a dream. The scene is a sandy beach with palm trees at either end, gently sloping down the calm blue waters of the sea. The sun shines in a clear blue sky. At the water's edge is a long line of men, women and children, all holding hands and looking out to sea. They are completely naked and their light brown skins glows in the sunlight. I awake with a profound feeling of delight Though I have never seen a beach, a palm tree or the sea, I have never seen a brown person, let alone a naked one, and I'm only two years old. We all have dreams. Sometimes our dreams are in vivid colour and they remain with us for a lifetime. Those visionary dreams are given to us as memorable communications directly from the soul. We get the message immediately but it can also take many years for us to discover what we have been shown. Like most infants, when I was two, I was more soul child than earth child, still in touch with the sacred aspect of my being. But there was hardship, suffering and anxiety as the world around me was disintegrating. In contrast, the beach vision was showing me quite a different world. In it, people are together, in harmony. The earth and the sea are at peace. There is an atmosphere of warmth, colour, serenity, safety and love. There is joy in union with one another and with the environment. I was taken to a place within myself where this reality was always affirmed. A place of love and light in the middle of my chest that I now call the heart space. This is my safe place to retreat to. Like a soothing balm to the painful reality of life at the time, the beach vision showed me that the world in conflict should not be like that. Life should be like the beach scene, which I had sensed as a beautiful feeling. Over the years, I came to understand that the beautiful feeling was about deep harmony of oneness. I have found myself measuring life experience against the sense of oneness, that beautiful feeling, that childhood vision of the beach. Now, whilst attending a seminar on the south of France many years ago, 
years later, Jack Angelo recalls his speech vision and attended a place of pilgrimage to an ancient cave where it is believed Mary Magdalene found sanctuary having fled uh, from Palestine. She spent her last years of life meditating and teaching. When Jack reached the cave and was resting, he began to feel chest pains and thought he was having a heart attack. He continues with the chapter and writes, As I struggle with these sensations, I heard her voice. This is the pain I felt when they crucified my Lord. Immediately my mind was awash with questions. Who was this? Was it Mary Magdalene speaking? And had she been there for nearly 2,000 years? Are you Mary Magdalene? I asked, aware that I was calmly listening to her and conversing with her. I could hear the smile in her voice. Yes, she said, my name is Mariam. I found out later that Mariam was her original Aramaic name, that in the Semitic culture of the time, my lord was the normal way of describing a husband. In fact, the modern Hebrew her, uh, word for husband is Baal, also translates as Lord. Jack Angelo mentions the smile in her voice. How wonderful this is in these present times of, of adversity, before we were ordered to wear a face mask in public places. Not so long ago, I was in the queue to be allowed into a local supermarket. The lady standing in the entrance monitoring who went in and who went out for social distancing purposes has the most wonderful smile and happy demeanour. I had to mention that to her one day, as not many people are smiling right now, and she thanked me for my comment. Now we are all having to wear a face mask. She is still standing in the doorway of the supermarket. She's still smiling, even though I can't see her face but she shines through her smiley eyes. Please continue to contact us in the normal way. Visit our website for details. We are a phone call away. We can chat with you if you need to talk to someone. You can email the sanctuary or write a letter for distant healing. We offer telephone healing, also Skype or Zoom. Join us tomorrow with Gary for another Healing Minute. Love to you all and bye for now. Love, light and blessings to you all. Take care. I'm hoping to finish today with some music by Snap and Kerr and it's called We Are The People.
Bye for now. Take care of your body. See you in the, tomorrow with Gary.